Verse 9 says, when they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there. He arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar. Here's the thing about Isaac. Isaac had to willingly submit to his father, Abraham. Isaac wasn't a toddler. Isaac wasn't even 7, 8, 9, 10. They believe that Isaac was anywhere between the ages of 13 and 18 years old. Abraham is 100. Let me tell you, if a 100-year-old man tried to come and bound me up when I was 15, it's not happening. All right? But Isaac willingly submitted to Abraham's faith. Isaac willingly allowed his father to tie him up and lay him on the altar. He submitted to his father. Man, the impact Abraham's faith had on Isaac. Let me tell you, people are watching you. Your kids are watching you, parents. They're watching you to see the way that you live. They're watching to see the decisions that you make. Let me tell you, they're going to imitate those decisions. They're going to imitate what they see in you. And in Genesis 22, verse 10, it says, Then he reached out and took the knife to slay his son. There he is, laid out. Abraham, ready to sacrifice his son, the promised son. <laughs> the price that Abraham was willing to pay to walk in obedience to God. My goodness. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. The length at which Abraham was willing to go so that he was remained obedient. Lord, help me. Help me have faith. So when you ask me to do something, God, I, I want to have some instant obedience and get up the next morning like Abraham did. Lord, I want to be obedient even when it's going to cost me something. The Bible says in verse 11, but the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld him from me, your son, your only son. It was in the moment of Abraham's obedience. Abraham was getting ready to be obedient. It was in that moment that God intervened. In the very moment that the knife is raised, when Abraham is getting ready to walk out his obedience, it's in that moment that God intervened. God intervened and he provided. <laughs> Our God is a provider. He'll provide whatever you need from him. I don't know what it is this morning, but I know that God has the answer. I know God has whatever it is that you need from him today. See, it says in, we continue reading verses 13 to 14, it says, Abraham looked up. He looked up in the thicket and saw a ram caught by its horns. And he went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. See, I think sometimes we have too many Christians wonder where the provision is. Like, God, like, why aren't you providing for me? Where's the provision? Like, like, why are you taking care of me? Why is it that God's not looking after me or taking care of it? Is it because you're not walking in obedience to him? Is it because he's asked you to do something and you've reasoned in your own mind of why you shouldn't do it and you're off on the other path? Saying, you know what, I'll, I'll figure this out on my own. What you do is you remove yourself from the hand of God. God's hand is over here. It's over here. It's like, I got you. It's okay. I'm asking you to do something. You don't understand it. It's okay. 
I'm asking you to do something, and it's going to stretch you, make you uncomfortable. It's okay. My hand of protection is over here. But as soon as he's like, oh, I'm going to go over here, because that's way too scary. All of a sudden, you remove yourself from God's hand of protection, provision. When we're disobedient, we're walking on our own. I believe that one of the greatest hindrances to God moving is our disobedience and our lack of worship. Are we disobeying what God is asking you to do? Are, are you not worshiping the way God has asked you to worship? When I say that word, I mean when you're giving. God is asking you. God's word. Very clear. Given it will be given. God's word is very clear. Give me the first 10% and I will bless you more than you could ever possibly imagine. But when we don't, we remove ourselves from the blessing that God has. See, I can tell you, after accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior, nothing has had a greater impact on my life than my obedience. My obedience, not just in life decisions, but in my giving. Nothing has impacted me more. What is it that you need to sacrifice and lay on this altar this morning? When you came in, there was cards on your seats. It just simply says altar. I want you to take that card and just a minute, the band's going to play and sing. And, but I believe God is asking you to lay something down. For Abraham, he laid down his son Isaac. And he was obedient. He trusted God. What is God asking you today? What is he asking you to lay down? For me, 21 years ago, God asked me to lay down my dream. And here's the thing about sacrifice. Sometimes God lets you pick it up. Abraham was obedient. Laid his son down. The moment Abraham was getting ready to follow through, God stopped him and said, hey, it's okay, stop. I know that you trust me now. You were going to do it. And Isaac got up off the altar. <laughs> it doesn't always happen like that. I never got to pick up my hockey career off the altar. God asked me to lay it down. That was it. God wanted to know, do you trust me? Are you willing to walk in obedience to what I've called you to? So let me ask you today, what is God asking from you? What kind of obedience is God asking you? What is he asking you to sacrifice? What is he asking you to give up? What is it that he's asking you to do? Because here's the thing, all that God wants is your obedience. And I have no doubt there are people in here that, that maybe struggle with some things. Like, God, I need to lay down an addiction that I've allowed things into my life that, that are hindering me. And you need to uh, lay those things at this altar. So I want you to write down on that card what it is. We have two baskets here. Just come and, and put it down as symbolically, I'm going to lay it on the altar for you, God. But for some, it's not a sin. For some, it's... Maybe it's your job, maybe it's your career, maybe it's your kids, maybe it's, I don't know what it is. For some, I believe it's going to be walking in obedience when it comes to your giving. That God is asking you to start tithing, start being obedient when it comes to your giving. You know, when it comes to our giving, that in God's word, it's the only place where it says that we can test him. I want to encourage you, test him. Test him when it comes to your worship, when it comes to your giving. I don't know what it is for you, but all I know is when we walk in obedience, we lay what God has asked us to lay at the altar, and we walk faithfully with him, we will never regret it. And what you're doing is you're allowing the, 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 the blessing, the hand of provision to follow you all the days of your life as you are obedient with God. So I want you to go ahead and stand to your feet. The band is going to close in a song. And as the band is playing and 
as you believe that whatever you God is laying on your heart, to write that down and then come and place that card in one of these baskets and it's gonna be symbolic. Like, Lord, I'm laying this down for you. This is what you've asked me to do. This is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna pray over you and then we're gonna sing this and I wanna invite you to come. Walk in obedience. Sacrifice whatever it is God's asking you to. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for strength in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would give the strength to the one, Lord, that's fighting on the inside. That you're asking them to lay something down, Lord, that they're struggling with, that they don't understand. Holy Spirit, I pray right now you would just fill them with strength and courage, Lord. They'd walk in obedience, that they wouldn't seek understanding, but they would seek you, Lord. I thank you that you are faithful, Lord, that, that you take care of us. And God, I pray right now, give us the strength and courage to walk in faithful obedience to you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's go ahead.
about being obedient to the Lord. And now we're going to give you another opportunity to put your faith into action. You can be seated. We're going to close in just a few minutes. You can see the number of bags and boxes that are on the stage here with me today. And we have an opportunity to impact our neighbors and families around the world with the bags and the boxes that are here on the stage. So let me just take a minute to talk to you about that. And then I'm going to pray over you and invite you forward one more time to grab one of these bags or one of these boxes. So every year, we started a few years ago now, blessing families in our community that have a financial need at Thanksgiving. And, you know, we take it for granted. We go to the grocery store and we fill up our cart with whatever we need to provide for our families. But we know the reality is that there are many people in our community that don't have that luxury. And so we, as a church, want to be a part of somebody's Thanksgiving holiday. So what we have are some bags up here. When you take one of these bags, it means that you're going to look inside and find a shopping list. On the list is everything you need for a Thanksgiving dinner except the turkey. So the church buys the turkeys. It's hard to have turkeys coming in at different times of the day. So we buy all of the turkeys in bulk um, with the offering, the MB Cares offering that we take up every year. We use that. We set aside funds to purchase a turkey for every family. And then we ask you to take a bag to go shopping with the grocery list that's in here. Inside, there's an extra bag and a zip tie in case it all doesn't fit in one. You can just zip tie those bags together so we make sure every every family gets everything that they need. And we have you bring these back in two weeks. We also have an opportunity for you to sign up to be a part of distributing these meals, so these groceries. And you'll find a sign-up sheet for that at the Hub. You'll also find it on our church app. You can sign up for the distribution for when that's going to happen. But I want to ask you in these next few moments to just begin to pray. And ask God, God, how many bags, how many boxes do you want me to take? Some of you are going to take one bag or take one box, and that's great. Some of you are going to take multiple bags or multiple boxes. But again, we just want to be obedient. Amen? to what God is asking us to do. And then over these next couple weeks, we've already started collecting names of families in our area that we can bless with a Thanksgiving grocery package. You'll also see some boxes, and these boxes are through Operation Christmas Child with Samaritan's Purse. If you've never done them before, the incredible thing about these boxes is not that kids overseas get Christmas gifts, that's, that's pretty cool. But the incredible thing is that every child that receives this box also hears the message of Jesus. Amen. And that's how we're really impacting people. With the bags we give out, we're telling people about the Lord and same with these boxes. We actually have a video, just a short video that will show you a little bit more about how Operation Christmas Child is impacting people around the world. Let's take a look at that right now. This is the opportunity for a child to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. The mission of Operation Christmas Child never changes. Children are coming to Jesus, and children are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. Millions of children around the world are being impacted by these simple shoebox gifts. One box can touch not just the child, but the whole family. So we need to keep packing those boxes and pray for the children that God will use this in a very special way. So thank you for being a part of it. God bless you. If you've never filled up one of these boxes before, all the instructions are inside. So you'll just take this, fill it up, and bring it back in two weeks. Church, go ahead and stand to your feet one more time. And we're going to close the service like this. I'm going to pray a prayer blessing over you. Our band's going to lead us and, can, and play one more song. But after I pray for you, as soon as I say amen, we're going to close the service by you coming back to the altar. And this time... You're
you're not putting down a sacrifice, but you're picking up a way that you can bless a family in need. Let me just pray over you this morning. As soon as I say amen, come on up, grab your bags, grab your boxes, and we'll see you back next weekend. Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for every man, woman, and child on our campus today. God, I thank you for the obedient hearts, Lord, for men and women that want to serve you, God, with their entire lives. And Father, I just ask your incredible blessing over them, Lord, that you would use them as they pick up bags and boxes to be a blessing to someone else this week. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Come on up, grab your bags and boxes. We'll see you back next weekend.